You're listening to The Interview Show with Seth Goldstein on the phillytech.org netcast network. Thank you to our sponsors, aweber.com, wistia.com, getflywheel.com, and apps console. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the interview show. I'm here with Jason Snell, J. Snell on Twitter. Um, I guess a former editor in chief of PC World and Mac World, right? Yeah, more or less. I, I had an editor in chief for PC World. I was sort of the editorial director over PC World, but I was the editor in chief of Mac World. Yeah. The head honcho. The head honcho. We'll call you that. Yeah. Yeah, it was a complicated title. Complicated title. Exactly. Exactly. So. So what are you doing since then? I mean, I, I, we, ever, I mean, those who watch you on Twitter, you know, so you on triangulations, you know, right. you talk with Leo, and you're, you know, you're out on your own, faring in the wild. So tell us about it. Yeah, so I was, uh, I was actually planning on leaving IDG, uh, which is the parent company of PC World and MacWorld, for a while, and they talked me into staying, saying, oh, it's going to get better, and it didn't get better, and in fact. <laughs> They did a second round of layoffs, and uh, everybody uh, involved knew that I was not interested in going through that again, and uh, so I, I waved goodbye. And unfortunately, a lot of my colleagues uh, lost their jobs at the same time. I was kind of not expecting it to be this kind of implosion that happened. Oh, uh, that I was sucks. just expecting to walk away uh, on my own and say, look, bye, guys, I'll, you know, and I'm going to go do my own thing. And so the, the idea was, one, mm. I was burned out, and so I wanted to do – I didn't want to jump into another – uh, big media company job. And two, I had been looking at people out there uh, on the internet and really getting inspired in terms of what people were able to do as independent writers and podcasters. And so I wanted to give it a try. So basically, um, I launched my own site about a week after I left IDG uh, called Six Colors, sixcolors.com. Mm-hmm. And I'm writing. It's spelled out, right? It's spelled out. It's, it's all spelled out. S I X C O L O R S. Yeah, I should probably pay for the numeral versions and all of that. I just haven't gotten to it yet mm-hmm. uh, because some of those are kind of expensive. But, yeah, they, know, they get, some the of them cost, are like, the TV the is like, expensive, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I've got sixcolors.com, and then um, I was already doing kind of podcasting about uh, pop culture stuff at theincomparable.com, mm-hmm. and uh, when I left IDG, I was able to start doing tech podcasting. So I uh, moved a podcast that we had been doing at IDG over to the Relay FM network, Relay.fm, and then started a new tech podcast called Upgrade over there too. So now I've got some tech podcasting, I got some pop culture podcasting, and I got my site where I'm doing writing. And we'll see how it goes. I um, I would prefer between that and maybe some freelance and consulting and stuff. I would prefer to have this be my job. Um, I would rather not go back to a commute. I would rather not work for a big uh, company. When I, people ask, like, do you want to, is this, you know, a holding, uh, a holding pattern until your next thing comes along? What I say is, you know, I can't predict the future. It's possible that that will happen, but that's not the plan. That's not why I, I started doing six colors. If I, if I really, if the plan was really to just take a break from corporate media for a little while and recharge and then enter back into it, I would not have bought a domain and set up a site. I would have just um, so I would like to do this. I'm in my office here at home, um, having a great time. I just have mm-hmm. to see if the finances work, and that's the that's the for me. That's the, the key. Yeah, that's the key. That's what that's what we're doing over here. I started up the Fight Tech Podcast Network because I wanted to do a bunch of different shows. And I'm like, let's see what happens. My wife's like, get a job, get a job. So. And how's your wife take take taking all this? Well, she she saw me. She evolved last year. She evolved over the course of the year from me first saying I don't really like my job and I want to do something else, and she being you know really concerned about it. Uh, to by the end of the year, she was saying you got to you got to get out of there because you're miserable. And uh, so and she's making so, her miserable probably too. Yeah. So, so it, it so I I've got her full support and right. um, waiting around a little bit so that they did the second layoff. Uh, earned me some credit and some money that uh, that ha- is going to get us further down the path of trying this out. So we figure we'll try it for, you know, I, I think she's up for d- trying it for a year and seeing whether it's working or not. And that's a lot of runway. And we'll we'll know, you know, I think we'll know fairly clearly by by next summer whether this is possible or whether it's just not a not a thing that I can do. And uh, we'll or go more of a, or more of a side thing, you know. 
Yeah, well, you know, I have a lot of friends who do who do not have job jobs, who who are freelancers or they're part time here and there, and they, and when I say they make it work, I don't mean like they subsist. I mean that's what they do and that's their career and they're quite successful at it. So there are mm -hmm. lots of different ways these days to be uh, to be a person who makes stuff uh, in the media. Um, I. Uh, you know, I'm interested in being one of those people, but we'll see. I mean, I do have this other skill set involving like managing people and larger organizations and you know bigger teams mm -hmm. that, uh, as a solo person, I can't. Uh, I guess, and that is part of my value. So we'll see. Yeah. Uh, what I'd like to do is grow what I'm doing now to be, you know, have some people on a on a team. But I don't have know. Your own, we'll, have we'll your own see. little staff. Yeah, it would be fun. So, so here's an, here's, a, here's a question I have I always have because I've been doing podcasts for a while, but you know they've never really taken off. What what suggestions do you have to, for people that want to venture out there? I mean, I know you're still very new at this, but you also have a background in media. So, like, what, like, what's your suggestion that you've learned so far? I, well, it's hard. I mean, I was saying um, from the very beginning, you know, if you want to start a site, you're starting from no traffic. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, getting being visible is a real challenge, and so uh, some of it is exposure. Some of it is, I mean, if you're if you're starting from nothing and nobody knows who you are, um, you're probably better off um, getting exposure on some site that people know about. You know, writing for somebody else and then building up a name and then going out on your own. That isn't the only way to do it, but that's a that's one way to do it. That because you gotta you gotta be seen. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing would be to be in some other place where people are looking for stuff that's like what you're doing. So if you're really uh, good at making videos and uh, people are searching for those videos on YouTube, put, putting videos on YouTube is a path to success. And and we've seen people become really successful as, as YouTube video people because of that. But they were, they were using the fact that people are searching for stuff on YouTube. That was the the gateway to their stuff, and then they made stuff that matched those searches, and that's how they found people. So it's very difficult to to find a way in, but there are lots of different paths in. I, I you know, from my my background, I've got enough of a, a name recognition in certain circles that I was able to just sort of start a thing and say, here's my thing. Um, but I still have to grow it. I still I I still am challenged with people not being aware of my existence and my site's existence. So you know, that's one of the reasons I want to do some freelance writing and. And uh, you know, I, I wrote a piece on on The Verge after Macworld uh, print shut down, and that drove a lot of traffic to my website. And you know, that that piece was free; <laughs> I didn't get paid for it. But you know what? The traffic they sent me was totally worth it in that case. It, and therefore, it's not free. I mean, you're getting paid, and it, there's more ways to get paid than just. I mean, right now, I know for us, right now, our whole thing is based on finding sponsors that have stuff that we need. So we're running at a net zero with. With our hosting, it's paid for. Our audio hosting's paid for. Or we'll be paid for. Our video hosting's paid for. So I'm not making any money, but I'm not paying out any money. So it's a start. It's a start. So so I know we talked a little briefly about on uh, over Twitter about how you how you built structured your network. Like what, what what kind of services do you use to get your your podcasts out? Are you all video? Are you all audio? Or are you a little mix of both? So the, the podcasts are almost entirely audio. We do one that has a video component sort of separately and it's really just an adjunct where we post the video on YouTube and if people want to watch it, they can watch it but it's not the it's not edited and it's just, that's our Dungeons and Dragons podcast which we actually oh, do go. via Google Hangout so we just capture the video and and we and we run it because people some people want to see that it's just our little heads and squares and then a map of where we are in the dungeon but people wanted to see it and it, it's easy to do um, mm -hmm. but it's totally unedited and I don't know why people watch it but they do uh, I would that like to surprises me yeah, yeah. I don't know what, what people will watch people yeah. I mean Twitch the whole idea behind Twitch is people like to watch people, other people play games. Well, it turns out that, I mean, that's what uh, that's what I found with the Dungeons & Dragons thing, is it turns out people actually like to watch or listen to people play games, including, like, Dungeons & Dragons. And you get yeah. a, a bunch of funny, smart people making jokes and stuff as they're doing it, and it becomes kind of... Uh, I can see how that's entertaining now. The... the um, the production values on our on our YouTube videos are not particularly great. It really is just like this, except with more people and a and a map, a static map that has some <laughs> characters on it. It's not that interesting, but uh, some people like that. And a lot of a lot of YouTube videos and video shows in general, I feel like it's not like people are watching them all the time. They've like got it on and they're listening, mm -hmm. and then they glance up and look at it from time to time. And so even though it's pretty boring and static in terms 
seconds of uh, video, uh, it's it's uh, it fits a lot of, uh, of that. So mostly what we're doing is audio, um, and the incomparable shows. We just have a server, um, uh, a uh, Linode Linux server that we pay for, uh, fifty dollars a month, and wow. most of our shows are just served from that. And they haven't uh, screamed at you yet for it. I mean, I know because. No, that's uh, Linode. We get uh, four terabytes of transfer a month or something like that. Oh, Three so you're terabytes. fine. We've, yeah. we've never had a problem with transfer. So we're we're get, using the data we're paying for. And then for the main show now, we're using Libsyn. And uh, for all of Relay shows, we're using Libsyn too. So uh, mm-hmm. in those cases, you're, we're paying. I think it's twenty five dollars a month per show uh, for Libsyn's hosting service. And it's then. Not that uh, bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. And then we're not actually using Libsyn's posting, uh, like uh, blog posting service. The 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 sites for those shows are handled elsewhere with a different CMS, and we just use Libsyn as the as the download engine. And as long as Libsyn is able to stay in business at that business model of offering essentially unlimited transfer for twenty five dollars a month to uh, these shows, then that's a pretty good deal too. So it's a little bit, a little bit from A and a little bit from B. And then actually, my my website Six Colors is served by the same Linux server that's serving the incomparable and serving those incomparable shows. That's one, that's a single uh, Linode instance. That's fifty dollars a month for the whole shebang. Wow, there you go. Well, real fast, let's thank our three sponsors for the show. We have A Weber, their email service provider uh, based on Shelfon. So let's thank them. They are a wonderful service. If you go to aweber.com and you go to you can see my my happy face at aweber.com slash Philly Tech. It's one dollar a month and for the first month and then you can try it out for a dollar a month and then after that I think it's nineteen ninety nine going forward. Um, it, it's a great service and their emails do get delivered which is always a plus. Um, the other sponsor is Flywheel which is managed WordPress hosting which is built specifically for designers and creative agencies. Um, our, our site serves on there, and it's lightning fast. It's, it's incredible how fast it is. And finally, our other sponsor is Wistia. They are our video hosting providers, and they're amazing. So I'll figure out later on how to get these more in, integrated into the show, but I want to thank our sponsors. So back to Jason. So Jason, so... Um, Sponsor-wise, I mean, I know you were talking to Leo a little bit that you have a sponsor for, for Six Colors, right? And is that that's a weekly sponsor or a monthly sponsor? Yeah. So for from my website, what I do is I'm I'm basically doing the John Gruber model, uh, Philly's own, actually. Daring yeah, Fire. Yeah, I'm reaching out. I'm reaching out to John, seeing if you know I can get him on a show. Yeah. So uh, so John, I should say I'm in California, although my um. My uh, my grandmother lived in uh, in Dublin, which is near Doylestown. So oh, there's my, uh, five minutes up my street. There's me. I know you're in Doylestown, right? Yeah, I'm in Doylestown. Yeah. The, I've been to that that crazy museum that you got there. Um, oh, oh, the, oh, the, oh, the Mercer Museum. Talk yeah, about yeah. OCD. Yeah, multiple. Oh, I collected everything. Oh yeah, yeah. I've got I've got like souvenirs from that, the little glass bottles and stuff from the Mercer. I, I my, that's where my grandmother took me like every time I visited her. Oh, you should bring the kids museum. back sometime. I'm sure. Yeah, they yeah. Love it. Totally. Um, it's as bad as the Barnes Museum. Only it's not art. It's much. It's it's cluttered, but it's yeah, amazing. it's junk. But it's fascinating. It's like yeah, fascinating. Anyway, so John Gruber, uh, when he started uh, during Fireball, um, he wasn't sure how he was going to make money. He had like ads and stuff, and then at some point, what he realized was. Um, scarcity is can be, can be good. He started doing what what was at the time an RSS sponsorship. So his feed was sponsored, and and that was nice. But um, uh, he's expanded it to be like there's a weekly sponsor for the site, and it works really well for him, and it's worked well for others. And I thought I thought that's what I'm going to try to do is I'm gonna I'm gonna say you can sponsor six colors. You get a little te- line of text on every single page for a week. And you get uh, you get a post in the RSS feed on the beginning of the week, and you get a post on the site thanking you at the end of the week, and a tweet th- tweet thanking you from my Twitter account. So basically, like, it's there, but it's super well labeled that it's a sponsor, and it's not overwhelming. And there's one per week, and here's the price, and buy it if you like. And I, after listening to John uh, talk at a uh, at uh, the XOXO conference in Portland, Oregon, um, uh, he he told me that he he uh, at, at a conference he was talking about how he priced it too low to start. So I priced it at what I wanted the base price to be. Of so, like, yeah, right. That's a, that's like, your sponsor right there, right? Yeah, exactly. It's Kiffy. So it's Kiffy, um, uh, which is a, a cool like link sharing. Uh, I'm gonna just give him a plug. Cool. I'll link put, go by all means. 
So um, uh, anyway, the idea the idea there is um, I, I set a price. I put up a thing and said, hey, here's the site. Uh, you can uh, you can sponsor it if you like. I got a launch sponsor, which is actually the same guy who was Daring Fireball's first sponsor. He loves. Oh being wow! First. And first uh, doctor. <laughs> and and then I put up a I put up a thing saying I'm taking sponsorships, and I I am happy to say that I, I have sold out every single week that the site's been up through the end of 2014. So wow, that's awesome. That's, that's cool because we started September 15th, September 16th. So um, that's not bad. That's not a bad start. We got to keep it going, and yeah. I, I would love to keep growing the site and raising the rates. Would be a nice thing to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Honestly, yeah. if I if I sold out at the at the at, at the current rate, I felt like I felt like that was the minimum uh, that minimum that I could get at, to have the site be. Uh, successful would be like this is the rate that I, I set was like look if I can get this every week or more or less every week then uh, this is gonna be something that I could that I can do and so far Absolutely. that's that's happened so that's that's great that's awesome it's, that's awesome yeah. so I guess we'll end the podcast now let you get back to you know brainstorming and making money but you know where can they find you online Jason all right, so you can go to sixcolors.com, S-I-X, colors.com. Uh, you can listen to my pop culture podcast, stuff about TV and books and like so much comics fun. and Dungeons and Dragons at theincomparable.com. And uh, my po- tech podcasts are Clockwise and Upgrade, and you can find them both at relay.fm. Awesome. And then where do they find you online? Uh, on Twitter, I am at jsnell. So that I tweet a lot, so you can find me there at all times. You definitely tweet a lot, so yeah. And he's accessible. He responds to his tweets. I mean, it's hard to talk to him. That's what's great about Twitter is that uh, you can talk to people, and I uh, love that about it. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you, Jason. And Thanks. this has been the interview show, how cleverly named that is. And we will catch you in the next podcast. <laughs>